Okay, I'm going to share with you an idea I have called Doug's Lazy Gold Farm. Now, there are plenty of unlazy gold farms. You can go into the nether, you can build a mob trap, you can build sort of this big death bowl, you can build um, all sorts of spawning platforms, then the pigmen are pushed off to their death below. I'm you know, they could be pushed off into portals where they, they didn't come into the overworld, and then they're killed. So there's lots of ways to approach this. Now, the basic idea for this gold farm is actually inspired by a video I saw from DocM77, where he used this linked series of mega portals, by which I mean the big 23 by 23 portals, and they were all connected, and the pigmen would spawn, and then he used gas pushed by rails, to shove the pigment off one side or the other and then they would go into a water trap and then be pulled down and then fall and he could collect the gold and that's a brilliant and very efficient method and I applaud him and all the people that have worked on that but this version doesn't really require any redstone expertise it doesn't really require any high maintenance no TNT no fire charges no turning the system off and on um, so it's 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 lazy, but I do think it's fairly efficient, and I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of it. So the basis of this thing is a series of mega portals. They are 23 high, 19 wide, and the reason they're 19 wide is because that makes them 17 wide on the interior, and 17 wide on the interior is how wide you need to have eight blocks of water flowing one way, eight blocks of water flowing the other way, and then a hole in between for things to drop down. So, and the 23 highs is as high as they can get, I think. I don't, I'm not sure there's another geometry, but I'm assuming 23 is as high as you can get. So you have this series of portals, and notice that there's one space in between, and this is how it works, even though it's a lazy version of the trap. It spawns the pigment inside of the portals and then they just walk off into the water and then the water pushes them down and then no special redstone or anything is required. In order to generate this much obsidian, my wife and I, we just went into the end, we just dug a few of the big towers of obsidian down. If you don't want to destroy your end towers or you haven't gotten to the end and beaten the dragon yet, um, you can just use the standard lava method pour buckets of water on lava and clear out a couple of big lava pools. Uh, each of the mega portals, at least at the dimensions I'm using here, um, with the two, or I'm sorry, with the four corner blocks taken up, is going to be 76, I believe, obsidian blocks, so that's over a stack, and I'm using 17, so if you're going with the lava and the water bucket, it's going to take a while. I recommend the end. Some people wouldn't like to use that, I understand. Okay, um, as said, you have the water, it flows down eight blocks, it drops a block, flows down another eight blocks, and it drops into a trough, and the trough flows them into a, a pit that's about 24 blocks deep. I may have tweaked that slightly. And then on the outside, between the portals, I have these little pillars that just kind of stop them from jumping up and getting over the wall, and then on top of those, I have half slabs to stop bombs from spawning. Out of this trap. Um, this is the bottom of the sort of, I don't know, the kill hole, whatever you want to call it, the kill pit. Um, I'm using, as you can see there, the, the splash potion and a looting sword technique, and the very first thing you see me getting is lots of experience orbs. Um, this is after, I'm going to guess, about 20 minutes of idling. I'm not really sure. Um, and it just goes on for a bit. So just FYI, when you throw the splash potion, you're going to lose visibility. Now the second thing you're going to get is lots and lots of rotted flesh. So I just pulled up a quick little incinerator system, which uh, you know you, you put the stuff you don't want into, and then that goes to a hopper, and then a comparator clock sends pulses back to the the dropper. I'm sorry, it sends pulses back to the dropper. And then that spits the stuff you don't want down into a netherrack fire, and that helps to clear out some of the inventory. 
And then, of course, the point of the gold farm, the gold ingots and the gold nuggets. And just kind of let you take a look at how many I got from this haul and how many I've gotten in general. A huge side effect of this project is you get a lot of gold swords. Um, some are enchanted, a lot are slightly damaged, but you do get some that are undamaged. Um, frankly, too many golden swords. Oh, and I guess while I'm down here, back kind of to the implementation stage, just wanted to show you the... Uh, my splash potion making system, simple hopper into a brewing stand, fill it full of bottles, stick the ingredients in order, and then just sit back and let it brew into instant splash potions of healing two, um, or uh, however that order goes. <music> if you want to make it more efficient, you can definitely expand it. You could spread, stretch it out further, uh, put more layers of water, you know, each time stacking the portals up just one higher so that the, the pigment could flow under it still. Or you could even span, expand it width-wise by having more troughs of water flowing stuff down if you wanted to. I really don't know how much more it would help. Um, and plus, it doubling the amount of portals means you have to spend, you know, another hour or two of digging up obsidian, possibly longer depending on your sources. So and overall, for me, this works really well. For you, it might work. I'll leave that up to you. But it's you know it's a good time. It was a fun project. It has been surprisingly successful. I thought it, there was a chance that when I started it, that it wouldn't do anything. So I'm I'm perfectly happy with it. And I mean, I guess that's just about it. But anyhow, have a good day. This has been Doug, the librarian who plays Minecraft. And um, I guess I've got some fishing to do.